information. He was uh, taken. But, and what surprised me so much, surprised me so much about John the Baptist was how humble he stayed. I mean, here was a man, eccentric as he may have been, <laughs> way out in the forest. I mean, when we have evangelistic meetings now, we, we try to find the most prominent place to have evangelistic meetings. But he went to the desert. He, uh, he was eccentric in his diet, he was eccentric in his dress. He, he attracted swarms of people out there, but always willing to realize his role. You know, in, in pro football and basketball teams, they, they have what they call role players. And, and you know, say in basketball, they may not be the one that's making all the baskets. But their role out there is to get the rebounds, or to uh, to dive on the floor for a loose ball, or, or things like that. And John the Baptist realized that he was a role player here. He wasn't the prime reason for <coughs> what was about to happen. So uh, he took that role and he did it humbly. Uh, it's easy to be a star and, and to get all the glory. But, it, but it's a little harder sometimes when you, you do the background work and uh, you, you play the role and those, uh, Margaret, these last few weeks, she's been playing that kind of role, getting information together and researching and uh, I think every day this week she was here for 10, 12 hours a day. I, I know <laughs> early in the morning she'd come, but she, she, she plays a, a role player and everything's happening. And, and sometimes we as Christians, don't you think the majority of the time our job is to be the role player? No matter what our role is, just a second, Mike. Where is your hand a little earlier and we'll get the mic up because we all, all want to hear you. <laughs> Whatever our role is, we should take a lesson from John the Baptist and Jesus too for being humble in whatever our roles entail. Uh, I believe it's very strong. The majority of the time, we as Christians, at any stage, our roles are not, uh, you know, being a fantastic singer or terrific preacher or uh, whatever. But mostly our roles are in the little day, little things of everyday life. Uh, I, I, my mind just jumps to examples I know in our church. Greg Aberley never says too much. But every week he knows who was at church, who was absent, and uh, if for any reason somebody's not here, Soon after church, he's on the phone, quietly, he's found his role, he does it, so that's, that's the majority. We, we can't all be preachers like uh, Pastor George here, we can't all sing like <laughs> a great, a good one. Hopefully <laughs> not. But all of us have neighbors. All of us have family. All of us have our role to play. And the result doesn't mean how much glory there is in it or how much recognition, or anything like that. that. That's not what it's all about. It's in what, how we play, what is that old adage? Flower, I mean, blossom where you're planted? Yes. That, that fits, I hear that quite often. Uh, the Lord has given you a role to play. The certain capabilities, he's put you in a certain area. You know, as I look over the members of our church, I'm sure they're all put here 
for a special reason. Uh, they were brought here and they stayed here and sometimes they have to leave. Uh, that, that gets kind of rough. Okay, let's go on to, uh, let's go on. They, I, told, I was told I had 15 minutes to finish the question. Dude, I'm going to have to skip a little bit here. Twenty-fifth verse through uh, twenty-eight. Uh, we'll 25. push forward. <laughs> uh, First John one twenty-five through twenty-eight. Then those who were sent by the Pharisees asked him, "If you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize?" John told them, "I baptize with water, but right here in the crowd is someone you do not know, who will soon begin his ministry." I am not even worthy to be his slave. This incident took place at Bethany, a village east of the Jordan River, where John was baptized. Could you imagine even members of San Peter? He said, he's right here. He's right here, and the heads turned and looked, and then he looked over. You know, I was thinking, the Sanhedrin wasn't uh, all wrong for doing that, because they probably thought he was a hillbilly or something. You know what I mean? The, the Sanhedrin was the uh, uh, city folk. They was uh, high up and stuff. And here's some guy. At, uh, you know, they they probably called him a farmer or a hillbilly. You know, what authority do you got to do with that? You know? I bet you know, they wasn't wrong for saying what authority you got to you baptize anyone. He just came out of nowhere. You know? <laughs> yeah, he came out of nowhere. And the... the uh there were members of the Sanhedrin that at some point became believers. They, they weren't bad people. Uh, Nicodemus was part of that group. He was quiet and kept it down for quite a while because if he had spoken up, uh, you know, over in some of the Islam countries, if you one of the leaders and you convert to Christianity, it's a death sentence. And it's probably about like that for the believers there. When they looked around the crowd, Jesus.